Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's not every time you buy a tool, you use it, you turn around thinking, wow, I really needed that tool. That is a great tool. That is almost a game changer. So that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about today. We're talking about this Makita handheld dust blower. It's kind of in a class by itself, let's say. Um, well, at least the only real ones. So we're gonna be talking about this. You do not wanna miss it. You need this, stick with us. So this right here is the Makita GSA-01. It runes on their XGT 40 volt max platform and it is a handheld dust blower. And it's kind of one of the only few handheld dust blowers that are, you know, compact size, not like leaf blowers and, you know, job site dust blowers with big tubes and stuff like that. Um, this is a handheld dust blower. And um, like I mentioned earlier, I used it right away and thought, wow, I really needed that tool. I didn't, you know, think about we needed this tool until we got it and started using it, right? Speaking of which, we did purchase this in that sponsor video. Nobody sent this to us. Uh, just keep that in mind. So, anyways, uh, the thing that really makes this different is that it's pretty much a size, pretty much size of, let's say, an oversized impact driver, right? Not as heavy as an oversized impact driver, and it blows a small amount of air very fast. That's a huge difference, right? A leaf blower will blow a lot of air, medium, right? Slow, medium, fast, right? Whereas this blows a tiny amount of air very fast. So we're gonna be drilling into that. Um, let's go look at the marking and height, and then we'll bring it in closer and take a better look at it. So this right here is Makita's 40 volt max XGT brushless cordless handheld dust blower, model number GSA-01. It has a Makita built brushless motor that delivers up to 447 miles per an hour and 39 CFM. It has four modes. It includes by default, uh, whether you buy it as a kit or a tool only includes four nozzles. And if you use a 2.5 amp hour battery and on low, it will deliver up to about 50 minutes of runtime. That's actually quite a lot in case, you know, if you use dust blowers before or just leaf blowers, you know that 50 minutes on one small battery is a lot, all right? Anyways, uh, it's got all the Makita, you know, Outsmart, Outpower, uh, Outlast, uh, X XPT type stuff. Uh, not Nothing too much to talk about there, but it also has an inline fan that delivers good tool, uh, tool balance. You know, most leaf blowers do not have an inline fan. Um, the filter on the intake reduces uh, dust being blown. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Rubberized grip. It's compact in length at only seven and an eighth of an inch. Right, and it comes with Makita's three year limited warranty. All right, so before we get too far into it, let's talk about the nozzles here. As I mentioned, you get these five nozzles when you buy it, you know, as a kid or a tool only. This one right here is the three millimeter high speed nozzle, right? And it's, you know, it's got a really short tip there and also like some vents to help, you know, not, uh, you know, block too much air going through. This one right here is the seven millimeter nozzle. And, you know, this one gets used quite a bit. I, don't use it as much. This one right here is the 13 millimeter nozzle. Um, I, this is the one I probably use the most, uh, probably between this one and the 13 millimeter one, or this is a 13 millimeter one, so either between this one and the seven millimeter one are the two that I use the most, uh, but the 13 is usually the one I use a little bit more than that. This right here is the wide angle nozzle, okay, and it's got one uh, vent here, two vents here, and two vents here. So a total of five vents. And the idea behind this is supposed to be like a blade, right? So if you're blowing a lot of dust, you can kind of use it to move, you know, let's say like a blade across instead of this is really just shooting like a stream. It, uh, it works okay. I'm gonna go and say it doesn't really work the best. If the uh, blower had, let's just say four times more volume, and five times more, you know, airspeed. Yeah, this would probably work really great. But uh, with the amount of air coming out of it, I don't think it really works that great unless you're like really close, then it will probably make a difference. But you know, um, doesn't really ever really get used. And this one right here is the uh, pinch valve. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to blow up things like beach balls and stuff like that, this is the one that you would use. It actually goes in there and, you know, uh, gets past that check valve a flap, whatever you want to call it, you want to say, and it, you know, blows that air in. So uh, don't really use this one too much. You know, we do have high volume blowers for stuff like that, but you know, 
that's what's really going on there. So before we get too far into it, let's go ahead and talk about some of the specs here, okay? So this right here will blow up to uh, uh, 447 miles per hour and on Makita's uh, paperwork or white paper, let's say, it delivers an average of 360 four miles per hour, okay? And there's four modes here. Here, go look at it, right? And as you saw there, uh, you can look, engage the mode without having to press the trigger, which is usually something you have to do on, let's say, a drill or an impact driver. But on this one, even if the tool is not, you know, on or off or as long as the battery's in, let's say, you can engage the mode button uh, by default, right? So with a 2.5 amp hour battery, on low, it'll give you 50 minutes. On medium, it'll give you 25 minutes. On, let's say, high, they say uh, 17 minutes. And if you put it on max, which is the mode that everyone's probably gonna always be using it on, is gives you 13 uh, minutes of runtime on a 2.5 amp hour battery, right? So um, I've been using it quite a bit. Uh, right now it's got the four on it, but you know, it generally lasts pretty long. You don't have to drop something out in the middle. So. Other thing to note here is it delivers a maximum air pressure of around 4.2 PSI, okay? Um, so like I said, it's a little bit different than dust blowers because that blows a lot of air. This blows, you know, small amount of air very fast. So let's go back to these uh, mode settings here real quick. So right now it's on max, it'll deliver about 39 cubic feet of air per minute. On low, it will deliver 21 cubic feet of air per minute. On medium, 28 cubic feet of air per minute on high, 35 cubic feet of air per minute, and on max, 39 uh, cubic feet of air per minute, all right? All right, so let's talk about the nozzle system here, all right? So uh, it's pretty simple. You just put it in, stop it right in, and it stays on, it's locked in. You can hit it, stays on, no problem. I even dropped it, you know, not with this one, but uh, it hasn't really fallen off. It wasn't high though. Um, so the way you take it off is you pull this collet back like an impact driver, and then you turn it and it pops right off, right? You can put it on incorrectly, right? Let's just say if I put it like this, right? It's on there, but it's not really on there, right? When you use it, some of the air will escape through here, it'll make some kind of whistling sound, so it'll be pretty obvious that you turned it, you know, inserted incorrectly. But when it's on right like that, you know it's on, okay? Pull it, up, turn, pull it back, turn, comes off. No problem, right? You can use it without a nozzle attached. I don't because it kind of ha blows the uncontrolled air everywhere. You do want to control the air, you know, just use some type of nozzle, right? No problem there. So let's go and look at the tool. This part right here is hard plastic. All this other black stuff here is rubber overmolded except for the trigger. Pretty standard Makita stuff, Makita plastic, uh, brushless motor, Makita emblems, you know, standard uh, Makita overgrip and that kind of stuff there. No frills, no thrills, right? On the back side here, there is a filter. Um, you can remove the filter by, you know, turning it and then pulling it out. It's a spongy type filter. I'm trying to do this uh, without it facing you. It's a little bit challenging, but you grab it, right? And you turn it and you pull it out. Or you can grab some pliers and pull it out. I am struggling here because it's just in there pretty tight. Anyways, so we got it out, all right? And there is this sponge type filter in here. There's also another uh, sponge type filter in there. This is after we've blown it out a couple times, but you know, we have been using it. Uh, there is an optional filter C that they call that you could purchase and put in here. It's uh, designed to capture more of the dust so less of the particles go through. Uh, potentially damaging the motor or whatever surface that you're blowing or working on, you know, in case it was something sensitive and you wanted to, you know, keep it more dust free. Whereas this will let a lot of the, you know, small particles through, but just restrict some of the big dust, right? So the way you put it back in, I'm gonna try to do it backwards without looking at it too far, right? You just drop it in, push it, and then you turn it and the filter is locked. Same thing to do, you know, take it off, right? Uh, don't mention, if I, remember if I call it, but there's a fall rest type system on here in case you want to put some kind of lanyard or other fall rest type system. Other than that, this backside is pretty standard. Usually the Makita fall rest system is going to be down here, but on this one, it is up here and this is actually metal, okay? Uh, moving around to the other side here, same as the other side, pretty standard stuff here. It does not come with a belt clip. Can't imagine you needing a boat clip for this, but it would be nice if there was on there, right? Because there have been a couple of times I use it on the roof to blow out uh, part of one of the uh, laundry chutes that come out, but different story. Um, so that's what's going on there. On the front side, there is an LED light, no problem. This is a variable speed trigger. We'll talk about that in a second. And it has, you know, a lock out button in case you did want to lock it out, right? So on the, um, the variable speed trigger, 
it is a variable speed trigger, but the variability, let's call it, or the trigger response, the trigger response is okay, but the variable variability of the trigger is not that great. Let me take you for example, on low, right, watch this. It's okay. A lot of, let's say a lot of play. Let's go to max, all right? Right, so the trigger response is, let's say, okay, it's pretty laggy, right? But uh, it is brushed, so keep that in mind. But the other thing is, you know, the variability, it could, it could use some work. It is variable, and it's great that it's variable, but you know, there, there's a lot of room for improvement there, okay? So um, other than that, that's what's really going on with this tool. All right, so what can we say about this tool? Uh, we love this tool, I love this tool, and there's a lot of times uh, I wish I had this tool and just didn't have it. But anyways, like I mentioned, um, the, it, re it will replace a job of uh, your air compressor for cleaning duties, not for like framing duties and all that kind of stuff, but it will do it for most cleaning duties, okay? The biggest difference between this and air compressor, air compressor will do a lot of, well not a lot, it will do a medium amount of high pressure, whereas this will do uh, a lot of fast speed and low pressure. And there are situations you do wanna use, let's say low pressure, Let's take, for instance, HEPA filters, right? If you got a dioxin or some type of, you know, vacuum with a HEPA filter and stuff like that, you do not want to use high pressure to uh, clean those filters out. You can, um, but with high pressure, uh, it actually has chances to damage some of those, you know, HEPA filters because it's just tightly spun fiber and stuff like that. You do want to use, let's say, lower pressure and high volume to just reverse and push the uh, dust backwards out of the filter so, you know, the filter longevity and stuff like that would last. Some of those instructions will say you wash that stuff. You know, I'm not sure how many people actually do that. We used to do that and we just said, no, screw it. We just started taking air compressor and we started cleaning it out. And now we don't do that anymore because we have this. So this is actually a really great tool. Other things we use this thing for, cleaning out keyboards, cleaning out the car, especially if you got like air vents and uh, you know, those little crevices, the vacuum and stuff don't get to. Uh, you just take one of these, take a little brush, you know, blow it, uh, all that stuff cleans out. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, uh, you know, air filters, like air purifiers and stuff like that. Also, we use it on the job site for just cleaning out, you know, tools or just blowing the dust away or sawdust or whatever it is that you've, you know, created a mess with, right? So sometimes we use this to clean up a lot of the tools that we use so it, you know, keeps looking, you know, fairly fresh or whatnot. And it will not always get the job done, okay? Sometimes the sawdust or whatever it is is, is just caked on there. You just, you just need to get the air compressor out to get that one done. But it will get most of the dust off, okay? So that's what we really got to say. I would not particularly use it for blowing up, you know, um, like uh, pool toys or, or, or beach balls or stuff like that. Um, we do have, you know, like say other high volume, um, like, you know, uh, compressors and stuff like that that you would use battery powered ones. But um, you, you can do that. You can use the blow up a mattress and stuff like that, but uh, that's not what we use it for. So things like keyboards, computers, um, anything, you know, with fans, uh, back of refrigerators, air compressor and stuff like that, if you're gonna do, make sure, you know, unplug the fan and do it um, so you don't, you know, send energy back into the fan. Anyways, long story short, uh, this is a great tool. We love this tool. It's probably one of the few things that, you know, we really, really, love actually purchasing um, because there's so many uses for it. And I'll say it just gets used around the house by other people, let's say uh, the wife, um, not necessarily just on the job site. So I kind of wish they made, um, let's say a, a better version or a more higher velocity version, if you want to call it that. Um, but there are other uh, accessories that you can purchase. For instance, there's like long nozzles. There's also like the filter we talked about. There's also like a, a hose type attachment system you can get on there in case you want to suck the air out of something like an air mattress or something like that. Uh, but out of the box, when you buy it as a tool only, it does come with this. I don't believe it's actually sold as a kit, but this is what you get as a tool only. And like I mentioned, we did purchase this tool. And so it will cost you roughly around 100 
$169. If you buy it on some kind of holiday sale, 10%, 20% off, or 20 bucks off, or whatnot, you could probably get it for a little bit less. But for $160, uh, this is a great tool. I can't remember last time we spent $160 on a tool that was, you know, just that much of a game changer. So, like I said, hope this video helped you guys out. Uh, this is a great tool. I'll definitely recommend you buy it. You need this. You don't know you need it until you get it, okay? Um, blowing out computer fans and, you know, editing machines and all kinds of stuff like that, crevices of cars and fun stuff. Anyways, long story short, hope this video helped you guys out. Have a great day. Check out the tool. Go buy it. See you guys next time.